this quick tip, what we're going to do is show you how to replace a fabric panel. We've shown you how to do a, a nail panel, but we're going to show you how to do a fabric panel, and we're going to show you how to we're going to really get into the hand stitching, and what a great tool that is for all you guys out there. Um, and this also is a great repair. Sometimes you can make a piece look new if 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 you've got damaged hair, which is very common on a lot of pieces out there. So for all you uh, do-it-yourselfers out there, if you're not learning how to do upholstery, this quick tip is for you because if you've got this damage and you've got an outside back that sits up against the wall, you can get fabric from the outside back and you can use it for that damaged area and you can do a really professional looking job, you know, it wouldn't be, and we're going to show you how to do that. So, so uh, let's pretend like we had taken the old piece off and uh, we're ready to put the new piece on. Um, from the back, from the outside back. Um, this happens to be a piece that I'm finishing for a student who uh, asked me to finish it and they've done a great job. It's a cut velvet that they have, it's beautiful. Um, they started with this, uh, but they just didn't quite finish, so I'm going to help them with this one. But um, this is, again, this is a common area. Um, you know, you can make an odd cap, but this would be a, even a more of a professional solution to a problem such as this where there's wear or cap damage on the front of the arm, okay? So you remove, you remove the old fabric and you cut from the outside back another piece. You can replace the outside back with the contrast if you want, that's up to you. But we have the piece. And the first thing you want to do is if you don't have a staple gun, that's fine, but you should have some cotton if you don't have cotton in there already. Okay, so you don't want to cover over wood, okay? Or, or this cardboard tack tape or the staples on your fabric, so you need a little buffer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a layer of cotton, I'm going to fold it in half, so you actually have two layers. I'm going to staple it. If you don't have a staple gun, you can tap this. Okay, so one side, which is the folded side, is pretty much where you need it to be. The other side you need to trim. Hold it down like so with your finger and then trim it. And what we're going to do is, you don't want to be have too much cotton or any cotton in the way where you're going to be stitching. So you're going to just kind of tuck that in like so. Just get away from where you're stitching. So what you create is like a little bit of a channel. Okay, then you take your fabric. You need some common pins, okay? And you take your fabric, which I have marked at the top. Top. And I'm going to place this in there. I'm going to try to get, he did a good job matching, so I'm going to try to match for him. He's got that design just about like right there. Actually, let's just take it over to him. See which one he's got. So many designs on this. Even I had a hard time picking up on that one. It's got so many different designs. So we're just going to put that on there. You can measure it if you want, something like this, but it's got that right there. And he's got that running down like that. So what I'm going to do is start pinning. Not folding yet. You don't fold right away. You pin first. Try to, you're pinning blind and you're trying to get a hold of the welting underneath. I'm just going to kind of let this, let this fall like this. So if you look over at the other one, it's at the same point. Okay. Right. The nice thing about pinning is you can adjust it too. I'm just going to drop that just a little bit. Try to get it looking like his on the other side. Yeah, there you go. And I got a few more pins in here. Let that go a little bit. Pinning around a curve is not easy.
fabric doesn't like to go around the inside curves. So it's kind of working a little bit. Okay, so I'm satisfied with the amount. We'll put one pin here, one more pin there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is trim down one side, which is this side. Okay, now again, you're, you're working to make sure you don't cut underneath, right? So, we have to start somewhere. So I'm going to start on this edge because it's the easier of the two. Okay, I mean to fold it. So what I'm going to do is fold that under. And I'm going to pin this at the bottom of the piping, okay? Like so. I'm going to pin this. Actually, you know what you can do? You can actually pin it to the cardboard tack tape if, you, if your pins allow you. It's even better to have a gap so you can even see the cardboard tack tape is ideal, okay? Okay, so we got that part done. I'm going to work up now. Okay, up at the top, we're going to trim it a little bit more. Trim it just a little bit more. The trimming should be about uh, three quarters of an inch uh, over you know, over, oversized, so when you trim it, you put it underneath. It depends on the fabric, too. If you have a heavy fabric, sometimes um, you have to pin it, to pin it a little bit more. I mean, you have to trim it a little bit more. Because the heavy fabric, you'll see, you'll see there's a fold underneath. So at that point, I'm going to stop. I'm just going to trim the bottom this way just a little bit more. I'm over, oversizing that. Then I'm going to come up this way. This is about a quarter, three quarter of an inch. Now, you can use your, you can use your pins as a guide trimming it, but a lot of you might want to just look, take a reference as you trim. But you're working blind here. This is the old school way of putting a panel down one instead of machine stitching it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to release the pins on, on the other side and pin that down. Give it a little stretch, not much, doesn't require much, and I'm going to pin right into the cardboard. It's a preference. If you people want to pin into the piping, you can, but I like the cardboard or, or in front of the weld would be better. I'm just going to tuck that in, pin that down, get that pinned down a little bit more. And a couple more pins. The more pins the better by the way. So I'm just going to take that down. Okay. Pin there. Okay, trim this. What I'm going to do is Fold this up, cut the bottom all nice. Then we may put a, a gimp tack on either side of this bottom piece, which is perfectly acceptable. It's a small headed tack. What I did was we, we pinned this side first towards the bottom here, and, I, and then I um, trimmed and folded this side. So now we have left two folded sides that are pretty much ready to be stitched. So now we're going to go up to the top and finish the top, which is the hardest part. Okay? So what you need to do on the top, the reason, another reason why you start over here on this side is that you need to make a cut right at this point where, where you get the roundness up at the top, with a, um, so it would be right about here. You don't want to cut all the way, you probably want to cut like half, half of the width of the piping, two half of the width of the piping, okay? And we're going to fold this like so. Try to get my hands out of the way for you can see. Okay. Get down a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna trim this up a little bit more. Fold that. Now we have to get it folded in in, in a you know with the roundness. 
try not to point it out like it. The fabric wants to point out really. It doesn't want to fold around in a curve. So you have to kind of unfurl it and kind of play with it a little bit. I'm just going to pin that right there because that's me on the top. I don't like this. I'm going to undo this. I'm going to try to roll that out a little bit more. There we go. That's good. Okay. And then we kind of roll it underneath. So this has to be this has to be stitched ready, which means it has to be tight. And we want it in relation to the white, the piping. Okay. So that's good. So I think what I'm going to do is show you this side first because that's I'm going to start from the top here. And it really doesn't matter where you start, except it does matter from the standpoint of if you're right-handed or left-handed. Okay. So as a right-handed person, because I want to show you guys, I want to get started on this and show you. I don't think I'm going to go through the whole panel. I'm going to, I'm going to stitch this side down because it's, it's, you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. When I get over to here, you're probably not going to be able to see anything that I'm doing because I'm going to be in the way. So I'm going to stitch this, I'm going to stitch this uh, right this side for you so you can get a good idea what I'm doing here. Okay, you know, admittedly, this is going to be a little hard to see, so I think we're going to get a real good close-up. Okay, so what you want to do is, um, what, what you don't want to do is take enough twine to do the whole panel. Okay, just give that up because what happens is you have too much twine to work with and it's just going to get in your way. I'll show you how to stop and start a twine. So what you want to do is, whatever distance that you're doing, which I'm going to be performing a distance from here to here, you want to take at least double that amount. Double, okay? Now this is a nice hand stitching nylon thread. That's very important. Don't use cotton thread, they'll break. And don't double up on a cotton thread. That, that's just a hassle. So now I'm gonna, I have a curved needle. I'm gonna use, depending on the fabric, you can use a bigger curved needle if you're comfortable with that. I'm gonna use, the, this is a two inch curved needle. Most of you will probably be using a one inch curved needle. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is try to get this thread towards the bottom, towards the bottom of that piping. Okay, I'm coming up and then I'm going to put a knot down in here. Now, if, if I'm good at my hand stitching, you won't know a hand, in this case I'm going to try to do a really good job because uh, most of you are going to have a hand, a machine stitched arm, one arm that's been damaged and you're going to try to make it look like the other arm, most of you. So I'm going to really try to do a really good stitch. I say that because when I'm doing my own piece, fully like a hand stitch piece, I'll do it fast and loose, a little, not loose, but just not perfect, near perfect, because it's a hand, it's hand, it's supposed to, you're supposed to see that it's done by hand. But in this case, I'm going to try to get it as much looking like a machine stitch. So now I'm coming out. Here's the thing. I had to use a red thread. I hope you can see this. But I'm coming out from the piping and I'm judging about a sixteenth of an inch behind each stitch when I take this, when I go, I'm alternating from the welt to the panel, welt to the panel, welt to the panel. And each one of those transitional stitches Somebody mentioned that that was a good word. They, they learned a lot by the word transitional. Transitional stitches should be a sixteenth of an inch behind. And the stitch inside, the needle traveled, depending on the length of the needle, I traveled about a half of an inch inside, okay? Now I'm going to come, the transition here, look, it's, it's down below about a sixteenth. That's very important because that's what locks the stitch. That's what hides the, the, the thread. And I want to show you when I pull this. Watch this. Ooh, did you see that? Isn't that beautiful? This is a great fabric to hand stitch, by the way. Now, now watch. Here I go again. I'm coming out. Of course, the benefit you have at home is that you can replay this till you get it right. You, if you're big, if all of you out there who want to be upholsterers who are just starting, this you have to have in your repertoire. You need to know how to hand stitch. It comes in very handy. You can do in-house repairs. You know, we're going to get into all that as we go along. Um, showing you how to maybe operate a business, how to start a business, maybe how to teach an adult ed class. We're going to get into a lot here. I'm going to, I'm going to try to give as much of my experience over 42 years as I can. Um, now we're going to come, we're going to alternate, we're going to come down here. See that? I'm right behind and I'm near the bottom. I don't want to take it too long of a stitch there. I'm about a three-quarter of an inch on that one. 
where I was a half of an inch coming out I'm gauging where I am that's the locking part of the stitch it's so important if you see your, your fabric puckering or if you see the thread it means that your stitch isn't proper and you need to re-examine or go back and rewind the YouTube rewind you can tell I'm an old man right that people out there don't even know what rewind means okay so watch this watch this locking sometimes it loosens up a pair but you make up for it with this this see that how nice that is and then you can you can take your, your hammer your, ma your magnetic hammer and just kind of hit it down like this to get it even more perfect and let's go along here okay I'm coming up so I'm, I'm focused a little bit in getting these perfect, but if I, were, if I were doing this and I want people to say, hey, look, he hand-stitched, I'd be a little bit sloppy. It's okay. It's hand-stitching. Most of my customers love the fact that I've hand-stitched a panel instead of machine stitch it. I'm really happy with the way this is coming. I got a little kink there, which I can work out. Look what I'm doing with my, my needle. I kind of work that out with the needle. See that? I'm going to take a smaller stitch around the front here. Just make sure I get that to kind of a critical part. Okay. Now what I want to do at this point, even though I have a lot of thread here, I want to I want to end this so I want to show you how to end and start a stitch okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go even further in along that piping that I can and then I'm going to intentionally we've been avoiding going through the loop up until this point I'm going to intentionally go through the loop and just make a little knot there you don't have to go back and make another knot that's fine it disappears I cut it I pull it out a little bit and cut it it disappears so my so I stop stitching right about there so I'm going to come this way And I'm going to get my, my thread to come out there. And then, um, you know, I actually, I, I like hand stitching sometimes. I have to be in the mood for it. I'll, you know, if I'm mellow, I'm drinking tea as I'm doing this. It really, I think you should pick, pick your tasks for your mood sometimes. Like, this goes into the category of hand tufting, too. Hand tufting requires a little quiet. You know, it's almost meditative. You know, this is meditative. And, you know, I think about you know take your time it's you know a hurry it's not like stripping a piece of furniture which is kind of manic you, know, you want to get the fabric off as fast as you can in most cases so I stitched over that last one and now I'm ready to come down and undo this it's important to undo your pins as you go because you're going to get caught up like that as, as you go but I'm not ready to undo that one yet <coughs> You no, know, my best mentors, I had many mentors, my best mentors were the ones that were calm and that explained things and weren't yelling at, at you like some of them would, <laughs> although they were all nice men. But some, some teaching, I, I think people learn better, it makes sense. Um, I think people learn better when they're not stressed, somebody's yelling at them. Get it finished, I need it done, you're not doing a good job, where did you learn how to upholster on a... Did you get your license in a cracker jack box or what? You know, they'd be joking them off. And okay, so we take that off. Take your hand and go back. Yeah. Nobody would know that that was machine stitched or hand stitched. So this is interesting because the piping is coming up off the offhand. I'm going to show you. You can get a stitch on the other side. So watch what I do here to repair that. That's what I'm saying. This stitch, you really need to learn this stitch. Keep practicing this stitch over and over again until you get very good at it. Because when you when you're upholstering, you could have problems like this that arise. Which this one just came up. Okay. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to keep stitching one more stitch down here. Alright, look at how nice that is. Look, except that, 
I'm trying to show it. Piping came off here. See that? So it's simple. Just, just go back, run your stitch through here. And I'm going to come out onto the outside arm and I'll pull that. And then I'm going to continue stitching on this side of the piping. So we learned some things there actually with this small little area that we did. Okay, and the neat thing about this stitch, the good thing about this stitch is that if you have a cushion at home that's and you don't have a sewing machine, it, all you need is a, a, one of these curved needles and the thread and you'll be able to fix it without even taking the filling out of the cushion. Maybe we'll show you something like that. Okay, and then that was just a quick repair on that and then I'm just going to extend my stitching up. You know, you don't even have to do a knot. If you extend your stitching and you're hiding your stitching up, you could just cut it. All right, look at that. All right, so it'll be the same on the other side. So, so there you have it, a hand stitched panel, fabric paneled arm and that you can use this hand stitch for many other processes, pro procedures. And the next thing we're going to do is a cushion. Our next video, we're going to show you how to close up a cushion. So I'll see you next time.